Hello everyone, this is Serena Nueva. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whoever you are in the Philippines. I am Serena Nueva. I am your teacher for Indonesian language and also a non-native speaker of Bahasa Indonesia. So today we're going to discuss for this for tonight about Bahasa, the affixes. Now we all know that affixes have divided into several, several forms, whether prefix, Context, infixes, suffixes, and so on. But this, but this stuff is very expansive. We're gonna be going to discuss everything. So instead, I am going to do uh, discuss uh, the prefix itself, the specified side, and those affixes that I mentioned will be divided into episodes. So two affixes, two two affixes or one specific prefix, what I mean, and we're going to divide it. and we're going to discuss it in per episode with two pre for example, two prefixes and so forth. So now we all know that affixes is a Affixes is one of the one or more sounds or letters that of course is a bond from attached to the beginning or the end of the word, base or phrase, or inserted within a word or base, the inserts that produce a derivative word or an intentional form. Now there are types of affixes. What I mean for, what I mean to say is here are prefix. Suffix, confix, and infix. Now, prefix, we just have, let's have a minute or prefix first before we go into the lesson proper. Now, prefix is an affix attached to the front of the root word which creates a new word, while suffix is just an opposite that places an end of the verb, right, right of the root word, that calls or creates a new word. Now, what is confix? Now, confix is a prefix and a suffix combined together to a root word which performs a single function or creating a new word. Now, because in English language doesn't have the concepts of uh, confix or infix. And the last one, infix, is an affix which is inserted within a root word and which creates a new word. An infix is usually placed into the root word after the first syllable of the root word. And infixes are rarely used in Bahasa Indonesia. So, what are the common Indonesian affixes and combining forms? The prefixes in Indonesia are the following: ber, di, ke, and the mal, mal groups. For example, specifically, ma, mam, man, mang, mang, mani, and pag groups. Pa, pam, pan, pang, pang, panya, par, sa, ter. So that's it. The suffixes are the suffixes in Indonesia are the following: an, kan, i, la, ka, nya. And the suffixes are per, an, ke, an, par, an. Sa, nya, pa, an, groups like pam, pa, an, pam, an, pan, an, pang, an, pang, an, and pan, an. The emphasis of Indonesian are the following al, um, er, and lastly, the combining forms antar, para, eka, kau. U, oto, un, u, mo, and nya. So for this episode, I'm going to discuss the prefixes first. Now the prefixes that we're going to discuss for to discuss is I'm going to this I'm going to discuss to discuss or just I to get one of the pre two or prefixes in this episode. So, so for this for this episode, I'm going to discuss the functions of bar and ma.
Now bar, now bar is to adjective is prefix. So a verb, noun, or adjective root, root words result in a verb, which often means, we often means being something, having something, a having a certain attribute, or indicating a state of being or a condition. And the primary function of the verb prefix is to indicate that the subject of the sentence is the experiencer or the recipient of the action in the sentence. So there are so there are six examples of the prefix verb. Verb plus agama is equals plus ber agama. Ber agama means to have a having a religion. Having a religion. The, aga, the root word there is agama, which means religion. The next one is ber plus bahaya. Bahaya means danger. And combine it together into perbahaya. It's a turn into an adjective. Perbahaya means to be dangerous. The third one is ber plus bahagia. Bahagia means happy. And turn combine it into perbahagia, which is which means to be, be happy. Next is per plus asal. Turn into per asal. Per asal means originated. It's a turn and it's considered as a noun. The next one is per plus bichara. Bichara means to speak. This means speak. Something like to converse to some. To some converse something or to someone, something to someone, something like that. Then when you combine it together into berbicara, and turns into a verb, which means to speak. And the last one is ber plus ganti, is equals to berganti, meaning to replace or to change. The next one is prefix ma or the ma groups now the function of these groups is to is for is first is to form active verbs you may combine any nouns or any adjective numbers and even verbs with themselves to form an, another verb the second one is to indicate that the subject of the sentence is the one or the subject doing the action of the verb Kumbaga, yung, sub, yung subject na yun ay siya yung tagagawa ng kompletatibong aktor. Sorry, Tagalog. <laughs> and the last one is, prefixing any words with ma would require a minor spelling change. May pagkakaiba. So, in this case, in the, this is, kung gamit siya ng pagpapalit ng ponema at pag at hindi po rin siya ng kagtas. Sa Tagalog pa, yung mga pandiwa na dinidikit sa mga ulap, yun sa mga ulap na simula, ay papalitan ng mga punema. Na para mag, para pagbikas nito, ay magiging mag, ma, mag, malinis ang pagkatinig nito. And it's also, in order to facilitate a smooth transition and the pronunciation. The inflection is based solely on the first letter of the original word, meaning the original word there, what I the original word there mentioned is the root word itself. So here are the so here are the first letters of the root words. The inflection, the first inflection we're going to present is mang. And when you attach first the ma, the prefix ma, the the root word for the root word next should be should be started with the vowels chi, ga, g or ge or ha. So they, for example, mangambar ka. The root word there is gambar. It's gambar, and the prefix used is ma. Since and since the root word itself follows follows the impression mang. The next one is manghianati. Manghianati, 
Okay, I forgot to tell you that Mangdambarkan means to draw something, something for someone or just to draw something. Back to the manghianati. Manghianati means to betray. Means to betray someone. The word where there is hianat, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be H, but in the, according to Kamus Basabahasa Indonesia, the root word hianat will remain once it's attached to ma, the prefix ma. It's considered. And the last one is, the last one of the example is mengkambing hitamkan. The root word is kambing hitam. It's combined, tambalan siya. It's tambalan ng salita. Kambing, hit, kambing means goat and hitam becomes, hitam means black. So if you combine together, kambing hitam, kambing hitam means hindi, hindi siya talaga literally na itim na kambing, which like scapegoat. Okay, goat figurative speech. And when you add it with mang, a prefix it becomes mang kamahitamkan. And the context itself of that word meaning to scapegoat. Parang pa, tumatakas sa mga problema. The next expression would be mang or prefix mang. The mang will be attached if the, if the root word neck, if the root word is uh, use, if the root word is started with the first letters B or B, F and V or V. Okay. The word is uh, here's it. The examples are Mumbayankan, which Mumbayankan, which means to imagine or to describe. Mumfitnakan is like to put. Okay, to have a libel or just to come just to bring a libel and mambacha mambacha means to mambacha means to be the third inflection or prefix is man man is used when the first word or the root word is used word, the first word or the Root word starts with the letters C, C, D, and J. For example, mencintai. Mencintai means to love. We haven't heard them sa mga kan, sa mga kanta na kita niyo na sa radio. And mendengar. Yeah, mendengar means to listen. Another example is nakaka. Another example for another example is. Manjalani. Manjalani means to live. To live with its emotions. Manjalani. Jalan means road man. So we go back, when you add when you add prefix man and the root word started with the jalan. Jalan since the, since the first word of the root word is j, it becomes manjalan. Manjalan. And added with uh intransitive intransitive suffix. It becomes manjalani. So, conflicts will be discussed in the future lessons. The next one is mang. If, if the inflation mang and the first word starts with the letter K, the, okay, the letter K there will be dropped. For example, mangandong. Mangandong means to become pregnant or to be pregnant. The next one, Mum, if you add the prefix mum, and the first and the first letter or, or the root word starts with the letter p, it become p, it drops the letter p. For example, memeriksa. Memeriksa means to check or to examine, and the and the other and another example and another one is memaksa. Memaksa means to Force. The next inflection or the prefix will be money. You you going to use money if the first word starts with the letter S, and once you combine the uh, that prefix into yes, together with the uh, first letter of the root word, 
the S there will be turned into Y just as it drops the, so the S of the root word will be dropped. So it turns into money. To man, money. For example, manyani. Manyani means to save. Or yes, manyani. And manyalakan. For the root word, the root word there of manyalakan is sala. Salakan. No, no, because it was with the word salah. Salah to blame. Salah means it's a fault. Banyala there in the, con in the example is to turn, to fire up, or to turn on. And the last one, the infection would be man. If the, if this, if the prefix one is, uh, is used just as Combined with the first letter starts with the or the root word starts with the letter T, the letter T there will be dropped. For example, Manolis. The root word there is Tolis and this Tolis, and when you combine it together, you combine it together, it be, the letter T there is dropped. Then the la, the next one is Manamui. Manamui is the root word there is tamu. Tamu means to, to, to be found or to, to meet. But when you go but when you combine it with man, the letter T there will be dropped. So that's it. That's very similar to that. However, the man, so there are implications that, that like as we discussed as what I discussed earlier. Ma plus kata karja or me plus verbs. Verbs can be, be, be combined with me, ma or pre, ma prefix. Now, the these verbs combined with ma combined with ma plus la kata, ka, ka, plus la kata karja or verbs. The meaning of the, the meaning of the sad word is exactly the same as the infinitive and the semantics may be different depending on the type of verbs. Now, to refresh our minds, now there are two kinds of words in Indonesian: the transitive verbs, which, which mean, which, which means the verbs can have objects, and intransitive, that which means the verbs doesn't have to indicate the objects, and it's equivalent to reflexive verbs. So, ma plus kata karja or kata karja transitive or ma plus transitive verbs. Those transitive verbs can be used cannot be used in sentence in their infinitive forms, except for the few words. For example, makan, minum, and so on. So, in order to use it, you must conjugate it with ma or some other prefixes. For example, saya memakan memakan roti. To indicate it. You must have to indicate the to indicate the object after the verb. We saya makan roti means I eat a slice of bread. The second one, dia menulis buku. Dia menulis buku. The after the, the object indicated in the verb, but the verb menulis is the book. So, which means so dia menulis buku becomes which means. He or she writes a book or books. And the third one, last one is I just very very simple to, to construct. Saya melihat dia. Saya melihat dia. The verb there is melihat combined with combined with the prefix ma and indicate and it should be the and the object should be indicated for right? such as dia. So Saya melihat dia means I saw him or her. Now, let's continue. Ma plus intransitive verbs. Now, unlike transitive verbs, only a few of intransitive verbs can be conjugated with ma. One of, one of the examples is dia menangis. Dia menangis means she or she cries. 
your advice. So like, umiiyak lang siya, you know, may dahilan, something like that. And most, let's continue, most interested in verbs which be used in their infinitive forms. For example, tidor means to sleep or just use other affixes. And ma can be also used as a noun. When, it could, when this prefix could combine with a noun, the new word could be meaning of the following. To put. You know, the following. To put a noun, put a noun or some other nouns. For example, for example, the word, the root word there is chat, which means to paint. But if you combine with ma plus chat, the inflection used is manga since, since the Word root word there starts with the letter C or C, so it becomes mga chat. Now mga chat means to pay. Sentence sentence given here is ay saya mga chat tumbok ruwat dito saya, which means my father paints my bedroom walls. And there are cases. Next case is to indicate that the subject turns into a noun. And most of the time, those those sentences, those words are just used figuratively in speech. The first example there is patu, meaning stone. And when you combine it with ma prefix, it becomes mambatu. Because the, the root word itself, patu, starts letter B, and the fiction use is mam. So it, come, so it becomes mambatu, meaning to turn into stone. For example, for this end, for this end is used for mambatu is dia mambatu, which means he or she turns into stone. So figuratively, it doesn't the magigipatok siya from the fairy. It just indicates that he or she doesn't move for hours. Just para for hours para ano siya eh, para nang nangyiklas yung tuhod niya or hindi na makatayo or hindi na makaka po, kasi, kasi she was just standing for for almost a few hours so two or more few or more hours and then cooping another example is cooping which means to it means here if you combine it when you combine into mangupeng, since the root since the root word starts with the letter K and if it, and the K there is dropped, so it becomes mangupeng. Mangupeng means to turn to ear. Literally literally literally. But in the actual context is to eavesdrop. To eavesdrop. To produce a noun. Another case is to produce a noun. Example, sampal. Sampal means we sampal means chili, and when you combine it with ma, sin ma plus sampal, the letter s is we drop. It becomes manyapal, meaning to make chilies. Now this, now this example is rarely used by Indonesians, but the Malay language does. And Indonesian people use that phrase, uses that word as an alternative, it become alternative as membuat sampal instead. Another case is to do the work with a noun. The, the one example there is bajak. Bajak means to blow. And to combine it together, the root word to mambaja since the root word starts with the letter P, so the expression is that it becomes mambaja, meaning to flow. Now take note uh, to look to flow, something indicated like mambaja um, for farming or for farming. And the other word for mambaja, other meaning for mambaja is, uh, is to hijack. And Take note that the trickiest part for ma is when it's being combined with a noun. It's being combined with a noun. Not all nouns that can be combined with ma and the meaning is highly dependent on the culture 
and the context. Next one is ma plus katasifat or ma plus adjective. Now, when you combine an adjective, the ma prefix indicates the subject changes more into in the indicated adjective. For example, basar means, basar means big. When you combine it together with ma, it becomes mabasar, which means to become big, become bigger. Kachil, kachil means small. And when you combine together, combine into mga chill, mga chill, which means to become smaller. Panas. Panas means hot. And when you combine, then turn to mamanas to become hotter. Panjang. Panjang means long. We add it with ma and turns into mamanjang, meaning to become longer. Puti. Puti means white. If you combine it with ma, it turns into mamuti. Mamuti means to turn white. And last one is kuni. Yellow. Kuni means yellow. And combine together it as to, to uh, mamuni, which means to turn yellow. And another example. And take note, I will, before I go proceed to another example, adjectives that describe emotion cannot be combined with ma. And another example would, would be uh, ma black biru become, biru means blue, and it's combined it together with ma, with ma, the affliction one, and added, combined with biru, it becomes mambiru. Becomes a certain blue. It's something like emotion. Becomes a not necessarily an adjective, but it turns into a verb. Next one is ma plus katapilangan or number. Now there are only two words that can be conjugated with ma. Because ma are satu. Ma satu means satu and dua. Satu means one. And dua is two. So sa, the root word satu, you combine with ma plus satu manya, satu, ma plus satu, it becomes manyato. In which, which the root, which the root is, the root word starts with the letter S, that it, the letter S will become drop. So, so it becomes manyato, meaning to unite. The example there is Orotua Manyatu para Orotua Manyatu Marakabartuba. Which means my parents unites the two of them. And the, and the last one is Dua. When you combine with prefix ma and it turns into mandua. Mandu, mandua becomes dua means to split into two. The example there is Parhatiannya mendua. His atten meaning his atten Parhatian meaning his attention is split into two. Lit in direct conversation it means not force or in, in actual meaning. And the second one is Hatinya mendua. Hatinya mendua means literally his heart is split into two. In the direct meaning it mean it means he is not loyal. He's not her. He or she is not loyal. Another thing is ma plus katatampat or ma plus places. When combining with places, ma will be indicated, prefix ma will be indicated that the subject is going to be going on the said place. Udara. Another one example there is the root word udara. When you combine it together with ma, black becomes mangudara. Mangudara means to go to the air for radio or TV program or the airplane. Laut. Laut means sea and turns into malaut, meaning to go to the sea for specifically for ships and sailors. Darat. 
Uh, darag means ground for land. And it combined with ma and becomes mandara to land for ships or an airplane. And sabarang, sabarang, meaning across. And when you combine with prefix ma, and the root word starts with letter S and try, the letter S there would be drop. So it becomes manyabarang. Manyabarang, manyabarang. Manyabara, which means to cross the street, sea, or river. And the last one, ma plus katasaro or intersections or, or expeditives. Now take note that the expeditives doesn't mean, don't mean swear words here, because it is context, but rather the words that mimic sounds or something like odd mimic sounds. For example, mo. Ba and Kwa and Shadara. Now, these expletives are accompanied with ma. Uh, it indicates the subject produces the indicated sound. For example, Aun. The root word for Aun is like a, it's a Indonesian word for tiger roar. And which combined together combined with ma, ma, the inflection, since the root word is started with a vowel, it becomes mangaon, meaning to roar like tigers. And the last one is lengu. Lengu means to move. But when you combine together, combine together with perfect ma, it becomes malangu. Since the root word there is started with a letter L. Malangu means to move like cows. So, this is very intense lesson, and I hope that, and I hope that you just been educated at this lesson. So, if you have questions and regarding, so I have an assignment for you, and just to write down on the comment section about the regarding the lesson, so you can lesson. So make a make sentence make sentences with. With the prefix bar and make five sentences with the prefix s with me, prefix ma. So all of, so this assignment you can also you can do this assignment by writing down your comments on the in the comment section below of this video. So I hope that you will learn something for this for this intense lesson. <laughs> and I would like to remind you that be sure to to be updated every Friday and Saturday, or if I had time, since it's something I'm very I'm very lo loaded for next week, and do not forget to subscribe my channel because because I'll be making lessons for your future and lessons by clicking the subscribe button, click the notification bell. For future notifications. This is Rene Veva, and once again, terima kasih untuk menonton dan sampai jumpa. And God bless you.